All right, now welcome back to another uh, fabulous adventure with the law with Lawson. Um, and 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 it's not it's not hard for me to come up with a lot of material because these feds keep on investigating all the corruption here in Honolulu. So uh, they actually make uh, the job a little bit easier. But on a serious note, um, you know, I wanted to bring you um, the show today. We're going to talk about uh, some of the investigations that's going on at the federal. Um, courthouse uh, federal grand jury still investigating as we talked about last week captain uh, uh, wheat michael wheat federal prosecutor from san diego along with his team of avengers are back they are the prosecutors who prosecuted uh, louis and cat Ke aloha they're also investigating um, and had the grand jury uh, investigation going on into the um I guess the retirement, the $250,000 that the city somehow uh, found. Um, uh, I mean, that's just incredible, man. I mean, here you got a chief of police that's under indictment, been indicted by the feds. Um, and instead of just leaving him, uh, you know, again, suspended or on leave with pay, they gave him $250,000 on the condition, him being Louis K. Aloha, that if somehow he gets convicted, he would have to pay back uh, the city, Honolulu, right? The $250,000 within six months. Uh, Louis got convicted uh, well over a year ago, last June or July, I believe, right? I was there. I, I mean, I was, I was sitting like three feet from Louis when the jury said guilty. And oh man, Louis, I mean, and you know what? Uh, uh, you know, sitting in that trial, that whole trial, every day, Kat and Louie came to court. And I didn't, you know, this show is supposed to be about this guy, the city manager from um, Roy Amamea, um, that, that was you know, got a subject letter and had testified at the grand jury last week. I'll get to him in a second. But, you know, um, you know, Louie and Kat, throughout that whole trial, right, they came to court every day, right, and matching Aloha wear, sitting next to each other as the proud couple. And all the defendants uh, sat there. Uh, I mean, were just such arrogance as if somehow they just knew this jury wasn't going to convict them. And so I was just like two or three feet away from Louis. I mean, I was sitting right, right behind him, right front row, front row seat when the jury said guilty, right. And Louis, I mean, out of that, so after seeing them for a week after week come to court, sit in court, they would. He would, lean, he would lean back in his chair, look at the jury like this, right, in court. And to see that jury come back and say guilty and, and, and Louis like doubled over, almost like somebody punched him in the gut. All right, so that's just, but anyway, because all this is connected. So keep in mind, um, again, uh, let's go ahead and show the first slide if we can. So this guy right here, I'm gonna call him Roy, cause this, I'm, you know, yeah, my students say, Professor Lawson, you, you really can't pronounce foreign names that good. You know, uh, I'm, I have a bad time um, pronouncing anything with a lot of syllables. So this guy is Roy Amamea, right? Mayor Kirk Caldwell, second in command, highest ranking person from Caldwell staff to be entangled in federal investigation. That's from the Star Advertiser, right? But he had to appear before a grand jury. And so there's different ways you go to the grand jury. And here's Rob Roy's lawyer. Roy's lawyer said in the paper that, that uh, let me let me find it for you. Roy's lawyer said that um, the government has the power to compel the appearance of a grand jury of anyone who government believes may be may know anything relevant to this investigation. I'm a mayor's lawyer, Lyle. I can't pronounce his name either. His last name said in a statement Friday that the managing director has not committed any crime, and his designation as a subject of a federal investigation. It's not a surprise. The government has the power to compel the appearance. Okay, but, but how does the government compel your appearance? And so here, as we go through these grand jury investigations here in Honolulu, I want you to know when you see on the news that someone got a subject letter or somebody got a target letter from the federal government, 
What does that mean, right? Um, or somebody got a subpoena. And so one way that, that, that you can be compelled to go to the grand jury, they just give you a subpoena. You're sitting in your office one day and this guy comes in or gal, the young lady comes in, has your subpoena and says, hey, you've been served. You open it up and it's commanding you to appear before the federal grand jury in downtown Honolulu on a certain date. So if you just get a subpoena, that just, you know, right there that means you're a witness. You still may want to call your lawyer if it's a criminal investigation. Uh, but anyway, um, that, you know, and so a subpoena, you know, it's just, and as the slide says, uh, when we talk about, we're going to talk about three things, how the grand jury or how the federal government can compel you to appear in front of a grand jury. Now, it's all going to come by way of subpoena. The first is you're classified as a witness. You get a subpoena as a witness, right? And that means that you got information about the case. Well, let's go to the next slide. All right, now this is, yeah. But now remember Keith Conner and Donna Leon, the city's high, highest ranking uh, lawyer. And Keith Conner our former uh, prosecutor, actually our prosecutor who's on leave. I can't believe he's still our current prosecutor on leave, but he is because he, he got a, uh, a target letter, okay? Now, when we look at this target letter, uh, what is a target? So if, you know, I would be in my office when I was practicing law and I get a call from a client saying, uh, uh, hey, attorney Lawson, I got a target letter from the feds. What does that mean? And so we, I'm like, look, we ain't gonna talk over this phone because if you got a target letter, your phone is probably bugged. So you need to come in my office, right? Wiretap, right? And so a target letter is on the opposite end of that spectrum of the, the witness. Target letter is the most serious letter. You, other than an indictment, I mean, the target letter means you're this close to indictment, right? And there's a slide talks about at the opposite end of the spectrum is someone classified as a target, right? When a prosecutor deems someone as a target, it means that the government believes that substantial evidence the person has committed a crime. So, we, hey, and so you have to tell your client, hey, man, that's serious. Get in my office, right? And so they come into your office, and we kind of covered this in one of my later, later classes, uh, earlier classes. You know, they come into the office and you have to let them know, hey, look, you know, you got a target letter and you can call down to the prosecutor, find out what's you being the attorney will call down to the prosecutor, find out what's going on. Uh, but in, by no means um, do you just, you know, there are some letters, you know, you get bills, you get bills, you get letters from people, you know, you get all this junk mail, and you just kind of put them in your junk mail uh, drawer in the kitchen or wherever you do your mail at. You don't want to do that with the target letter, because if not, sooner or later. Uh, you may uh, have the uh, U.S. Marshals coming with an arrest warrant because you've been indicted, right? And, and so, again, um, it, it really means that what, what the government is saying is, look, we got enough evidence on you to charge you right now. However, we're still doing an investigation. Come on down here and we'll continue to do it, you know, and you testify in front of the grand jury and, and uh, admit to whatever it is we believe you did. Give us more information because we want to see how 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 widespread this criminal activity is. And so these letters are used in like white collar crimes. You know, um, if you're talking, these, these target letters, subject letters, which we're gonna get to next, subject letters and target letters are used in white collar crimes and organized uh, crime like drug conspiracies, all right? And so normally when you get a client, if, if I had a client calling saying, uh, or someone calling that wasn't a client yet, saying, you know, I wanna talk to you, I may want you to be my lawyer. I got a target letter or a subject letter. Then I already know without them saying anything else. It, is, it either involves a drug conspiracy or it involves some type of white collar crime. Um, and so let's go to the next slide. All right, so Donna Leon, remember she got a target letter too. And so why is it serious? And we kind of talked about that, right? Um, and it's formal notice uh, that you would be called to give testimony to the federal grand jury. And, and so the reason why, you know, this is important is because when I'm a mayor's lawyer saying, well, hey, you know, this is the way that the government gets you to come down and talk to the grand jury. You get a subject letter. No, that's not true. The government could have issued a witness subpoena. Right. And so let's go to the next slide real quick. Right. And so now we're talking about, you know, the subject letter. Right. And so this is what this is. So Donna Leon and Keith Conner Sherrill both got target letters from the federal government. We just talked about that. Right. Those, 
it's the most serious you can get under an indictment, okay? Now, what's the subject letter? The subject letter is somewhere between the witness subpoena and the target letter. It's not as serious as a target letter, and it's, it's, it's more serious than being uh, getting a subpoena for a witness, right? Uh, to a federal prosecutor, subject is the person whose conduct is within the scope of the grand jury investigation. And what that means is that the government considers the, subject behavior, the subject's behavior suspicious. And there's some risk the subject has engaged in illegal activity. And so, you know, two questions comes up. This is the highest ranking person in the city next to the mayor. Why do y'all, and, and, and if you see on a slide, behind him is a guy named Max Sword. And old Max, this is Roy and Max, right? You see Max back there with his arms crossed? All right, so they both were at the grand jury last week. Now, Max was on the, uh, the uh, Honolulu County Police Commission, appointed by Mayor Carwell, when, when they gave Louie his $250,000 retirement bonus. And, and maybe, this is just my humble opinion, maybe what's being investigated is, is, is why it is that the city felt necessary to give Louis K. Aloha $250,000 after he got indicted, right? I mean, again, I've been doing this for decades. I have never, never seen a city do something like this after a public official has been indicted to give him $250,000 as a settlement, right? And then now, according to Donna Leong's uh, attorney, I'm just quoting from one of the news sources here, because I want to give you the actual facts, all right? And so according to her uh, uh, attorney, um, in addition to being, uh, this, this is a quote from her attorney, with respect to whether or not Donna Leong um, engaged in criminal conduct, and obviously the lawyer's saying no. In addition to being entirely legal, the severance payment to former, KLO, to former Chief K. Aloha was in the best interest of Honolulu as it quickly ended his tenure without further litigation. To suggest that a legal severance payment that accomplished this goal was somehow a crime is absurd. Ms. Leong is an attorney of great integrity, is completely innocent of any wrongdoing and should not have her reputation tarnished by this misguided prosecution. Now, you know, and again, as we all know, everybody's you're presumed innocent in our, in our government. Uh, until and unless the government can prove you're guilty of the crime, right? The presumption of innocence. But, but again, I, I'm just telling you, from being a criminal defense attorney, uh, when, when the target letter comes in, as it did for Donna Leon and Keith County Sherrill, I mean, we're talking about serious stuff here, right? You're not gonna get that unless there's been evidence uh, of criminal wrongdoing. So let's go back to this. Now, if you see, again, you still got Max Sword, who was on the police commission, who authorized the settlement. Loretta Sheehan is no longer on the police commission. She resigned um, a few weeks ago um, and objected to the settlement, but Sword pushed it. In fact, I think Sword was in the meeting with Donna Leon and uh, counsel for Louis K. Aloha when this settlement was, was worked out. Then they went back in to the police commission and voted and approved it with the exception of uh, Loretta Sheehan. She voted no on it. Okay, so now Max went to the grand. Max went to the grand jury last week, also, along with this guy named Roy, the city manager. This was Max's second time at the grand jury. Now, what could that mean? It could mean that they that you know. So, so, hit, so let's say the feds brought Max in six months ago. I say, Max, you know, you're under oath, right? You're a target or a subject uh, of this investigation. And they're asking questions. Then they continue to investigate. And then they find out, well, you know, either they find out more evidence that they didn't know and didn't ask Max at that time, or they find out evidence that contradicts what Max said earlier. And so they may think Max could be fudging a few things right under oath. So they call him back. And so you get a client that gets called back to the grand jury twice. Remember, at that point, if, they have, if they're telling different stories, they could be charged with perjury. And perjury means that you've told two different stories under oath, right? And so, and so that could be a perjury trap. And if you go back to the, um, the investigation that was on, on President Trump by uh, the former FBI, the head of the FBI, Mueller, 
<laughs> I thought I was getting old. Yeah, that Mueller investigation, remember? They kept, uh, President Trump kept saying this is a perjury trap. And, and Michael Flynn kept saying this is, a per this is what they're talking about, right? Uh, lying to the feds, either under oath or when you're in interviewing with the FBI agent or a federal agent and you tell, uh, and you don't tell the truth, you can be charged with perjury. But Max went back twice. So that kind of raises, you know, some, we don't know, but, you know, I would be concerned if I'm Max's lawyer. So if Max came to me and said, look, I got another um, call from the prosecutors that want me to testify again, I want to find out as Max's lawyer, what I'm going to call the prosecutor. What is it y'all want from him? Now, okay, see, I said, look, Lawson, no, we understand all that. All right, so now we got the witness subpoena, subject letter, which is what uh, uh, Roy is, and then you got the target letters. Those are three things that's coming out from the federal investigation that can compel you to come to the grand jury. You don't have to go, right? If you get a target letter, you can tell, you can tell the prosecutor, my client's going to take the fifth. He ain't coming down there or whatever. You know, if you call him, he's going to take the fifth. Um, Right, he has a right to take the fit, or she has a right to take the fit. Same with a subject letter, same as a, as a subpoena for a witness. If you know, if you get a, a client that says, Look, I got a subpoena to be a witness, they may not know this, but uh, I know a lot more information because I was involved in a crime, then they can take the fifth too. But those are the three ways you get down to the, to the grand jury. Now, let's get down to the meat of what we're talking about because they only give me a half hour here at, at, at uh, Think Tech Hawaii, and I got to cram all this in in a half hour. Uh, but I'm grateful to be able to do it. So here's what we're going to do. So when you get all these people in here, these people being Roy, Donna Leon, the highest ranking uh, civil attorney involved in this, Max, right? The only, right? And, and again, keep in mind what the feds are doing is they're climbing up the ladder. They're climbing up the ladder. And so all I can say is this, you know, uh, if, I, if I was sitting there and let's say Kirk Caldwell came into my office, hey, you know, they just subpoena Donna Leon. They gave her a target letter. They gave my, uh, my boy Roy, my, right? He, they, they, right? They gave him a subject letter. And now they call him uh, Max and Roy and Donna all down to the grand jury. Uh, Attorney Lawson, should I be concerned? This is, Mary, this is Kirk Caldwell calling me, right? And I said, Kirk, um, I don't want to talk over the phone because your phone might be bugged. So Kirk comes into the office. I'm just telling you straight up, this is what I would tell the client. I would, if I was you, I wouldn't be talking over your phone. Now, now there's a federal investigation going on and, and it's close to you. So come on in, Kirk. So Kirk comes in. I say, hey, look here, man. Um, you know, you got to come clean with me because the way it works down in the, in the federal pond, right? Little fish eats big fish. And it seems like they're working their way up because what's curious is who gave them the authority and told them that, that they should get this done? Whose idea was it that giving Louis $250,000 would be a good idea when he's under federal investigation? Whose brainstorm was that, Kurt? And if we know that some of the funds that was used was federal funds instead of city funds, and maybe they came from some type of grant and you took the money from this federal grant to pay off this criminal, then we got some problems, Kurt. So, you know, uh, again, you need to let, let us know, honestly, let me know. It's what I would, and people always ask me all the time, hey, uh, when you was practicing law as a defense lawyer, did you want to know if your client did it? And I always tell them, yeah, I want my client to tell me the truth. Because see, here's the deal. As long as I know that you telling me the truth, I know when everybody else is lying. And when you get into a criminal conspiracy, whether it's white collar, whether it's uh, a misky indictment, you're going to get some lying ass people. You know, I mean, they're criminals, right? And even, even some of the investigators and the police is going to be lying. It's just going to happen. And so it's odd that sometimes in our system, often in our system of justice, you got so many people in their line. Everybody in the courtroom know everybody line. Judge know the cop line. Judge know the witness line. Defendant, everybody line. And, then, and we're on a journey to find the truth. But anyway, let's get back to it. So I would tell my client, look, I need to know. As long as I know what the truth is, right? And remember, there's an attorney-client privilege, so I can't divulge any of this. But if I know what the truth is, and I can go to work on the people that's lying. But if you're lying to me and the witness is lying, it's hard for me to cross-examine, right? And so most clients, 
and and one one day I'll have a guest. I got some uh, you know former clients on the mainland that would love to and and you know uh, reform. They're reformed, right? Ex murderers and ex uh, uh, hitman that would love to come on my show and tell you why it's important for clients to be honest with their lawyer. Um, but anyway, that's that's beside the point. So let's 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 speed up here. And so again, if I'm if if Merrick Caldwell came into my office with all that's going on right now, I would tell him, yeah, you you need to pay a retainer. You need to hire somebody. If it ain't me, you need to get you a lawyer. Because from what, because the the, the real question is going to be who gave the order. Look, think about it in in Miski indictment terms, right? Now they got charged. You got this conspiracy to commit murder this young man that that was from Hawaii cop. Remember that, and we'll get back into Miski next week. I'm gonna give you guys an update on the Miski indictment next week, right? And so you got the individuals who actually killed the the, the young man, but you want to know who gave that order, right? As a prosecutor and the police, but you want who gave the order? Who told y'all to give Louis two hundred fifty thousand dollars? Where did that come from? Who has to approve that? Who has to put this in motion? Now, again, it, like I said, we still there, there's a secret grand jury going on. I'm just giving you my opinion, but this is from my experience, right? From looking, from doing this for years, and 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 very complicated white collar and and uh, 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 criminal enterprise organs, right? RICO clients or cases that they looking to, they looking to go to whoever can get that order. And that's probably the mayor. Now, I could be wrong, but this is my opinion. <laughs> so you know what? But one thing I'm gonna tell y'all is that I'm very seldom wrong or I wouldn't be on here talking like this. And so, like I said, it, 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 it's still my opinion, but that's what they are looking for. Cause somebody had to say, that's a good idea to give Louis $250,000. And if they're using federal grant money for it, that means that, 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 that they had to make it work. And why? Did Louie have something on some of y'all? Did Cat have something on some of y'all to say, y'all gonna pay me $250,000? Or, right, I'm gonna start flapping my gums, right? Think about it. I mean, the fans, look, a $250,000 settlement, as Donna Leon's lawyer said, ain't no, you could do that. It may be stupid, it ain't criminal. If it's coming from, from funds that you're allowed to use. But if it's coming from a federal grant and you took money from that grant that has absolutely, because when you got a federal grant, you cannot go outside the terms of that, right? And so if you put in to get the money for the grant and wasn't up front with it, you could find yourself falsifying documents, right? Commit some type of fraud. Now, I don't know, we're just guessing. But I'm telling you, man, I saw Michael Weed number. When I'm talking about the federal prosecutor and his Avengers go after Cat now. And 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 you saw y'all y'all don't remember this, but that jury came back in a heartbeat. I I mean they had five defendants with all these different charges. That trial lasted for weeks, and that jury was out for a couple of hours, and it was like guilty. And so two things. Everybody thought, every, not everybody, but a lot of these politicians and these criminals thought that, you know what, the feds indicted Kat and Louie and, and, and uh, Han and, and Bobby Wynn, those other two police, and they're not going to get a conviction. When they got that conviction across the board on all charges, only one defendant was found not guilty. When, when, when we and the uh, federal prosecutors got that conviction last year, it woke a lot of these other, poli these other criminals up. And so they may be down there. If I'm like I said, if, if they not look, they they calling all these individuals in one by one, and it's going higher and higher up that damn food chain. And that's all I'm saying on it. Now let's let's get back to one last issue before we go. Let's go to the last slide. Hey man, okay. So for you for you that don't know, that's a picture of Cat K. Aloha. The, uh, Convicted felon Bobby Wynn, convicted felon Derek Hahn, and convicted felon Louis K. Aloha. And they still haven't been sentenced yet. 
right? Now, a lot of people are saying, well, you know, I, I wish, I wish, why is it taking so long for them to get sentenced? The courts have opened back up, Lawson. Why can't they get sentenced and go away? Here's why I think it's good that they haven't been sentenced. The COVID pandemic. If you go back and look, Paul Manafort was sentenced to like eight years in federal penitentiary. Then the COVID pandemic hit. Where's Paul at now? He and he and his uh, he upstate in New York, uh, eating bonbons, and with house slippers on and smoking a pipe, watching uh, uh, Fox News. That's where Paul at. Michael Avenatti, remember Stormy Daniels' lawyer, the criminal that got. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this shit up. Yeah, Michael Avenatti got convicted by federal. Right, he's looking at double digit years. Guess where he at now? He in California, staying with a friend. If Cat and Louie and these other two knuckleheads, Han and Wynn, if they get sentenced now, especially with Cat and Louie's age, they coming right back home. And they ain't going to do their time in no penitentiary. They're going to do it on home incarceration. And so one thing I'm, I'm hope, hopefully, and hopefully the judge knows, hey, look, we're going to uh, uh, kick this sentencing down the can till we get this pandemic straight. And then we'll sentence you out. Because if anybody deserves to do their time in the penitentiary and not at home uh, eating bonbons, it's Kat and Louie after what they did to Grandma Puana and, and her uncle Gerard Puana. Um, and, and so, again, uh, to, I know people are saying we want them sentenced early. You know, they, they need to go and get sentenced now. What's taking so long? I want to give you the, the upside to it is you, we want this pandemic to go away because I think we'd be, I'd be more upset if she got sentenced and then they sent her right back here to Hawaii to say, you can serve your sentence on home incarceration. No, that, that, that is just wrong. So I'm out of time again next week. We're going to pick back up with, uh, I'm going to bring you some updates on the Miski uh, enterprise case, but until then, this is a law with Lawson signing off. I'll see you next Tuesday at 1 p.m. here on Hawaii Think Tank. I'm out.